city of Valdez was formed by a, basically it was a scam to lure prospectors off the Klondike Gold Rush Trail. They developed a town here in 1898. Some steamship companies promoted the Valdez Glacier Trail as a better route for the miners to reach the Klondike gold fields and discover the new ones in the Copper River country of interior Alaska. They said it was a lot better than the trail up through Skagway, which we've heard is pretty tough. Prospectors found that they had been duped. The glacier trail was twice as long and steeper than reported, and many men died attempting the crossing. Some of them contracting scurvy because they weren't prepared and they didn't have the fruit. Scurvy was a disease that also hit the sailors in the early days. The town did not flourish till after the construction of the Richardson Highway in 1899, which connected Valdez and Fairbanks. With a new road and its ice-free port, Valdez became permanently established as the first overland supply route into the interior of Alaska. The highway was open summer only until 1950, when it started operating as a year-round route. Here we see Mineral Creek. It's uh, fed by a glacier about 10 miles upstream. There's also some mining activity up that direction in the early days. Pretty cool country. The weather wouldn't cooperate, but you know what? It's green for a reason. Fog and the mist just adds to the pictures. Now we turn the page and we're looking at part of the larger fishing fleet that operates out of Valdez. We see trawlers, we see netters, and lots of charter boats. Look at the color of the water. Yeah, that's real. Here we see one of the boys going out. Motoring right along. Out over there in the background we see some of the fish processing plants. Some of the fish on your table probably comes from up here. Then we start to see the town of Valdez. Motels and the inner harbor. In the background. Yeah, the rain wouldn't let up. It just, this was taken in the evening, and truthfully, it was probably 10, 10 30 at night. And I came back in the morning and actually got a little bit clearer skies, but still raining on me. The trees in the background kind of puzzle me because they look like they've been a fire or something, but they just, I don't know, they look dead, but I guess they're not. As we scan over here to the right, over in the background, we see the where the cruise ships come in, and there's also some uh, grain export goes on here, and container export. There's a little better look at it. You can see the cruise ship sitting there. See a ship or two out there. I don't know if they're waiting for a load or if they're coming in and dumping a load. Who knows? They say more goes up than comes down, except the tourists, and that's that's a constant stream in the summer. Here's a closer look at the Inner Harbor and all the boats in there. If you're going to live in Valdez, I guess you have to have a boat. Valdez really didn't develop until the Alaska decided that that was perfect terminus for the pipeline and that's where they began shipping the oil out from so the pipeline runs from Prudhoe Bay Alaska all the way down to Valdez the loadout is actually on the other side of the sound right across from the port I suppose that duck crane is for getting the big fish out of the boats
Once again, processing plants in the background and storage. Now we're going to shift gears. We're going to go up Keystone Canyon, which is access coming into Valdez. This one here is was Horsetail Falls, and up in the background there you see Bridal Veil Falls. Rain just wouldn't let up up there. It was just not my friend. That's the whole river flowing down into the sound. While I was here filming this, uh, two Mennonite couples showed up. They'd been up at Fairbanks for their nephew's wedding, and they were out seeing Alaska like we were. Just They were going to spend a week driving around and enjoying it. Very interesting people. The drone adds a new dimension to viewing the waterfalls, because it's a lot easier than trying to climb up that trail there to see the top of the waterfall. We'll just fly up, look at it, and come back down. I'm lazy. The boss has always said, work smarter, not harder. You see the strata, now yeah, everything's kind of on a tilt there. You can also see the heavy rain coming down. We know it's clear, clean water. No problem there. It's always amazing how the waterfall fans out. It just kind of spreads itself out. Here's the foot of Bridal Vale. We'll go up Bridal Vale and look at it. Don't remember what the name of the waterfall on the right was, but it's it's basically a permanent one also. There's dozens of waterfalls in the spring that just litter the hillsides as the water finds its way down to the river. It fascinates me to watch water cascades like that. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed this as much as I have being there. It's fun to relive it, go back over it. Hope I didn't bore you to death. Here we are at the Low River again, water headed for Prince William Sound. Thank you.